and welcome to We the Jury, the People's Court of Interactive Television, where the verdict is yours. Tonight, beef is under examination as we debate, is beef safe to eat, following this week's announcement by the government that BSE in cows could be linked to brain disease in humans. Some people argue that there is no evidence to support any cause for concern about eating beef or beef products. Others argue that BSE infected beef is getting into the food chain and that there is a risk that beef is not safe to eat. What do you think? Well, you'll have your chance to tell us during the programme by voting yes or no on our vote line and also by giving your opinions on the debate on the hotline. Helping you to come to your view will be our studio audience who will be following the cuts and thrust as outlined by our two principal speakers. Leading the side for beef is George Lyon, the new Vice President of the National Farmers Union of Scotland. And opposing him is Dr. Stephen Dealer, Secretary of the Spongiform Encephalopathy Research Campaign. Listening to the debate will of course be our jury, who at the end of the programme will be voting, and we'll see how their verdict ties in with yours at home. They are volunteers from all walks of life. Andrew Foggy, a Deputy Rector from Inverness. Lynn Ross, an advertising manager from Ellen near Aberdeen. Raymond Bremner, a factory supervisor from Wick. Sandra Craig, who's unemployed from Arbroath. Alan McIntosh, a plumber from Aberdeen. Jeanette Malcolm, a charity fundraiser from Dundee. Innes McLeod, a senior financial consultant from Stornoway. Connie Fraser, a single parent from Lossiemouth. George Whitton, a chef from Arbroath. Julie Gerritley, a schoolgirl from Stonehaven near Aberdeen. George Simmons, a retired taxi driver from Dundee. Louise Matheson, a teacher from Carbridge near Inverness. But we also want, of course, to hear from you at home. To vote tonight, if you think beef is safe to eat, then this is the number to ring to record your yes vote. 0891 112255. And if you think that beef is not safe to eat, to record your no vote, call 0891 112266. And if the lines are engaged, do keep trying. You can give your views during the programme as well. Ali Bali from Radio Tay AM, Paul Martin Davis from North Sand 2 and Titch McCooey from Murray Firth Radio are all waiting to take your calls. Ali, for the last time this series, could you just remind us how people can take part? Indeed, the hotline number is now open. It's been open since 8 o'clock this evening and it's been going very, very busy. Aberdeen 636 3 is the number. The code if you're outside Aberdeen is 01224. To save you looking it up, get through to us quickly. We want to hear from you. As there are lots of calls coming in, at the moment, complete down the middle. Some people blame the farmers, other people blame the government. Uh, an interesting comment from Karen Williamson. She says there are lies, damned lies, and politicians. It's a disgrace to make parents wait for the clearance of beef. Now, what is really a parent supposed to do? Eggs have got salmonella, the sea is polluted, pork is packed with hormones, even sweets are unsafe with gelatine. What can you feed your children? And have you really ever seen a healthy-looking vegetarian? Well, it's a happy woman. Thanks, Ali. And we'll come back, of course, to you later. But let's get started into the debate. Here is our first speaker, George Lyon. George, you have two and a half minutes to tell us why beef is safe to eat. Thank you, Annie. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're gathered here tonight to debate a very serious question. Is beef safe to eat? I speak to you here tonight as a parent with young children concerned with their well-being as a consumer of beef and beef products, also as a farmer, concerned for the well-being of my animals. So above all, I want to be sure that beef is safe to eat as well, because I consume vast quantities of it. The answer to the question, of course, is we have to turn to the independent scientists. They are the people who can tell us what the truth of the matter is. Who are they and what do they say about the safety of eating beef? The so-called SEAC group is a committee made up of independent world experts in these diseases. They were set up by the government a number of years ago to examine BSE as an issue. They are not subject to political pressure and they are completely independent. The government have accepted in full all measures that they have recommended as the research and information has become available. And I have to say that our industry has always fully supported these measures as they've been introduced just to ensure the safety of our product. That is paramount as far as our industry is concerned. 
The idea that there has been a government cover-up just does not hold up. The committee's findings have always been published and the scientific evidence upon which it is based is freely available. Wednesday's statement by the group announced a possible link between the exposure to beef offals before 1989 and a new strain of CJD which has been discovered in 10 people here in the United Kingdom. Research still continues to assess what the risk is from that exposure. However, the BSE agent has only ever been found in specified bovine offal material. Since 1989, these offals have been removed from all cattle at slaughter and have been destroyed. They never enter the human food chain. The latest measures recommended by the independent scientific group reinforce these precautionary measures and the precautionary approach taken by the government since 1989. The independent export group have com expert group have completely rejected any suggestion that beef or beef products should be withdrawn from the marketplace. The feed ban which was introduced in 1988, which rem removed infected material from the animal food chain is working, so there is no need to slaughter any animals in the UK. The incidence of BSE in cattle is dropping rapidly in Scotland. To sum up therefore, members of the jury, I like you am not an expert on the subject. I therefore have to rely on the science to make a judgement. The independent scientists say with, that with comprehensive regulations and precautions that are put in place, British beef is perfectly safe to eat. Thank you, ladies and, and gentlemen of the jury. George Ryan, thank you. Challenging the case, Dr. Stephen Dealer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. BSE, or mad cow disease, is one of a group of very serious illnesses. These are fatal, untreatable. There is no method of diagnosis before death. And they can be passed from one species to another by eating infected tissue. Let's remember that they are not destroyed by, by cooking in any way. Experiments have been taken place to see if BSE is likely to be transferred to other species. It's been transferred at the moment to 19 out of 20 species in which it's known to have been tested. This is really very serious. The human form of the disease, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, can start with merely a loss of an ability to, to move, but it leads on to a dementing illness, an inexorable death. Clearly this is not a kind of disease to take risks with. There always has been a 70% chance that humans could catch BSE. The reason for this is there's always a 70% chance that one of this group of illnesses can be passed on to any other particular species. But this latest information from the government really does show that there's almost a virtual certainty that BSE has infected humans. The latest report makes this absolutely certain. We eat large numbers of infected cattle. 1.8 million infected cattle will be eaten by the year 2001. On average, adults in the UK will have eaten 50 m meals made of the tissue of infected cattle each by now. We are eating liver, kidney, lungs, muscle, nerves, blood, which another other animals have been shown to be infective. And, for instance, liver has been found to be infective in all other species tested. And don't forget that the way that they have used to look for the infectivity in bovine tissue has been completely inadequate, would not tell you adequately if it was infective or not. So you cannot make statements like these bovine tissues are not, not infective. That cannot be done. Government blamed scrapie originally. Said so BSE was derived from scrapie. Well, we didn't catch scrapie, did we? We'll be all right. It now seems that scrapie may have had nothing to do with it whatsoever. Also, we are eating between 10,000 and 100,000 times as much BSE as we were ever of scrapie. The Ministry of Agriculture said BSE would go away when the practice of feeding the cattle with potentially infected food was stopped. Large numbers of cattle have continued to be infected since then. And Evidence is building up fast that the, the disease is passed down from cows to calves. 
there's large amounts of evidence that lots of cases of BSE are not being reported to the government. And so lots of figures that the, the numbers are in fact dropping are not as good as we would hope. In my view, children should not eat beef. If we wait for humans to die, to prove the point whether beef is safe or not, it will be too late by then. Are beef products safe to eat? There's no proof that they are. And on the available evidence, it is, uh, there is an unacceptably high chance that they are not safe. Stephen Dealer, thank you very much indeed. And at the end of the programme, both speakers will get an opportunity to sum up tonight's discussion. But for now, let's open up the debate to our studio audience. I think, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we should try to establish a few facts, if we can. Alistair Gregg, first of all, how did cows contract BSE? Where does it come from? Does anybody know? Not, not 100%. We still think it came from scrapie, a modification of scrapie, which we've had around for tens of years. And it came, we reckon, when they changed the, the, the method of processing meat and meat products. Awful, going through a new process for an activation. They removed solvents from the process and the agent came through and got into the, the, the cattle side at that point in time. That then served to fuel the start of the BSE outbreak. But if, if scrapie wasn't a problem, why should BSE be a problem? Because it's changed, it's modified, we think. Lady here. Uh, well, scrapie hasn't been a problem over the last two and a half centuries because the infected material, namely the brains of sheep, have not automatically and traditionally been removed in abattoirs and put into the human food chain, unlike cattle brains. Cattle brains were, until I started a campaign to stop it, were added to our food chain till November 1989. The infective material is the brain. One ought to have a few facts at one's disposal before venturing an opinion about beef, I think. This bug is unique. It is almost indestructible, <coughs> the scrapie agent. If I tell you, for example, that a museum pot containing a scrapie infected sheep's brain transmitted the disease to experimental animals after being in formaldehyde for 10 years, you'll get an idea of the organism. It proliferates, multiplies in the brain. It gets into the body by mouth. It circulates around the body like everything else. It goes into the stomach, but it settles in the brain and multiplies there. It lurks in an infected individual for years. In the case of humans, the similar, perhaps even the same organism, in humans for 20 years and more, during which long incubation period the person or the animal appears quite healthy but has infective brain material. There is no test to reveal to us which animals are carrying the disease, or rather there is a test which is cheap, effective and available, but for some reason the Ministry of Agriculture hasn't made use of it. And finally, I should say of this organism that scrapie has been transmitted to a great long list of experimental animals in the past, including, without any difficulty, primates. Right, well H. sapiens is just another primate. That is pretty comprehensive. Gentlemen there. Yeah, basically, I don't really see how awful can be caused, the sole cause of these diseases, because during the 1980s, the offal that was produced in this country was exported to countries all over the world, to Russia, the third world, other European countries and South America, in millions of tons and fed to cattle populations there. So why haven't we had any BSE in some of these other countries? So you're saying scrapie wasn't the cause? Not at all, no. But I mean, in America, scrapie... good evidence for this. I mean, there's evidence that it is, maybe it's not the, 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 the cause or the, or the sole cause. There's good evidence there may well be something else that is involved that certainly makes an animal more susceptible to an agent such as this. And this is the very worrying thing. There may be something else in the UK that may make humans more, infect, more easy to infect or something like this. So we don't yeah. actually know. We don't I know. I must say there's an important issue here. What we've seen is the evolution of a new disease. The pattern of that mm. has been very closely monitored. The best scientific advice on how to accommodate it has been taken. And I must very strongly challenge Dr. Dealer on his statements. 
The point here is there is a high level of consumer concern and it is very important that they are reassured on the very best of evidence. Well, let's, let's, try, and, let's, let's try and find that evidence. Correct. Let's try and find that evidence. The government has introduced measures to try and contain BSE. Are they adequate? They are absolutely adequate. They've been no, proven no, no. to be adequate oh, over the period. Hold on just a second. Explain why. Why are they adequate? They're adequate in terms of all infected material have been moved out of the food chain. No, it hasn't. The, no, it hasn't. the no, beef hasn't. that is left in the food chain is perfectly safe to eat. That is based on the best advice from the independent committee. What I would challenge Dr. Dealer on is, has he put his information to that independent scrutiny? If he has, what is the information he has back in that? I've given the information to the committee. It has been demonstrated, published in major scientific journals. Right. Now, and over this side, this side, I would and like to find out, I would like sorry, to find out whether accepted, you yes. accept that the government government has actually introduced adequate measures to hold back BSE. No. Gentlemen there. The, the government hasn't introduced adequate measures. Beef, beef in, they stopped a beef coming into the food chain for cattle in 89, but they still allowed it for pigs and chickens. And so large quantities of meat and bone meal got into the farms a, and a 35 25,000 cows went down with BSE since the banning of meat and bone meal and half of them, possibly half of them, were due to uh, getting contaminated with meat and bone meal from the pigs and chickens. But uh, Professor Almond at Reading University, a friend of mine, he, two days ago, he stopped the meat and bone meal being used on pigs and chickens. It's not now a uh, barred and I think we'll see an improvement in the situation. Okay, gentlemen, there. Oh, right. But of course, that's I mean, accepting. The, there's a curious uh, paradox in there somewhere that either they accept that the original source of the infection was scrapie and sheep or not. And the whole point of these banning, first of all, of the feedstuffs into the food chain, the, the beaten bone, meat and bone feed, uh, feedstuffs into the animals' food chain, and then the animals that became infected, making sure that they came out of the food chain, and then taking out the, 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 the parts of the animals that we know could have been affected. Uh, but do you know infected. that these are the only parts of the animal that were affected? Um, there there is, there is considerable independent scientific analysis of other parts, the real meat parts of the meat, and they have not yet shown any right. of these parts to be okay, infected. Okay, I'll come to you in a second, so over here. Quite Gentlemen, there, so. you can try and go a while. Yes. Uh, I want to challenge, first of all, the assumption that all the research is easily accessible and being published. Um, but could, could, could you also answer this, whether or not, well, yes. just, just for people at home, are obviously very concerned. Yes. Well, is I've what the government has done adequate? <coughs> is, is basically removing the brain and removing the spinal column and nerve tissue, is that enough to make beef safe? And land, well, and, and it is not. And uh, the agent is found in a lot more tissues than simply the brain and the spinal cord. This is uh, a government publication, it's a government document, <coughs> and it categorizes tissues into three types. Uh, those which have got high concentration of the agent and tissues such as liver, lungs and perif major peripheral nerves which it describes as having moderate to low concentrations How of the agent. How about actual flesh? Are, are you saying that it might actually be in the flesh as well? Are the you talking about cattle here? Ho we're hold talking, on a second, so yes. yes. Uh, we're we are talking, talking about talk cattle and we're talking about all tissues no. in cattle? No, we are talking about uh, a group of common diseases which have got an agent which we have not yet isolated or identified. But could you put that into simple terms? Are yes. we talking about actual meat as I'm opposed to just awful? Or are you talking about liver? What are you talking about? At this point in time we have no diagnostic test for this agent. Well, there is no way of determining which bovine tissue has got so the it agent could be anywhere. in it. It could be anywhere. Right. The test that we use to, to examine for it is by injecting it into mice but they use a mice model. If the mice develops the disease, then we know the agent's there. But right. you, the converse is not true. Okay, Dr. Martin. That is the accepted method of deciding whether there is an infectivity in any tissue, is to inject mice. And we know from many years of work that tissues in sheep affected with scrapie, many of the organs and tissues are infective and, via, and the agent can be isolated in mice. Now That's quite clear and, and, and established. You, you were but involved in, in the early scientific uh, investigation yes, of this. Yes, it was with the uh, Southwood Committee. Uh, are, are, you, are, you confident, are you confident that enough was done and has been done to remove BSE from the food chain? Yes, I think the Southwood Committee's recommendations were excellent at the time they were made. 
First of all, they stopped animals which were infected and, and showing <coughs> chemical disease from going into the food chain. A very, very important issue. Secondly, we paid compensation, perhaps not the full amount as we would have wished, but the government withdrew from paying 100% com compensation at that time. And third, we reinforced the decision that meat and bone meal m must not be fed to ruminants. Three vitally important issues. Right. But no, I'm, I'm sorry, but th this side over here, they are saying that, it, that they, all they've been able to find BSE in is the nervous tissue. They have removed it. What evidence do you have to the contrary? Well, there are two very Continuous important things to remember. In 1988, when the government worked out that feeding cattle brains to cattle killed cattle, they stopped that awful going into cattle. They didn't stop it going into us. They kept on feeding us cattle brain for one year and three months later. But that is no longer no, happening. No, it is it? still the, happening. The it is still happening. Excuse me. Excuse, today, excuse me. It is my floor at the moment. Hold on, hold on a second. Yes, we're, we're coming. We are coming to that. It's not safe. It's, well, I think I think he's trying to answer that. Is it safe? I mean, no, because in December 1995, three months ago, the minister minister of agriculture Douglas Hogg admitted that spinal cord, one of the most infective offals, was still getting into the human food chain because slaughterhouse practices are inadequate. Right, gentlemen, at the back. Well, when this uh, issue first came up at the, the beginning of the 90s, we, we said, it's, OK, it's supposed to be in the brain of the cattle. Now, I've been through abattoirs and seen cattle split, and this whole spinal column was splattering all over the rest of the meat. And we said at the time, that surely is a risk. This is nervous material, material that's where the, the infection is. And the government were laughed at at the time. Later, the government said, yeah, we've got to remove the spinal column. Now, yesterday, uh, John Pratt of the Meat and Livestock Commission, he was telephoned by an organisation, uh, uh, an animal welfare organisation in England, and he was asked specifically, this is a question I've raised time and again, if it's in the nervous system, now, if you prick your finger, you feel pains because you've got the nerve ends in all your tissue. And he was asked specifically if that meant that BSE agent was in the tissue, the actual flesh. What they're talking about is prime cuts of beef. And yes, but it's not concentrated like in the large nerves of the central nervous system. It's only a very fine network. It's a dose-related thing, and you need very high doses, so the very small nerves in the, the, the meat are, are not going to cause a problem. We don't know that. There are too many unknowns about this. Right, right. At the moment, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, we're going to have to go to a break. We will come back to it, I promise. A fairly varied reaction there from the audience, an initial reaction from the jury. Yes, and well, let's see some scientific or independent scientific evidence that British beef is still unsafe to eat. It would also be nice to find out if other comfort countries don't suffer from the same problem. Okay, and there? Yeah, this side are promoting that practices are still being undertaken today where there is obviously a risk of contam contamination um, and unlike in this, that, that, does that concerns me. Okay, and uh, yes. Lady, the gentleman here, yes, sorry. Yes. <laughs> and the same, I'm a bit concerned about the uh, both arguments, but I feel it's tragic, tragic for the farmers, and as of now, I'm behind the farmers. So you still think, so far you think, still it's, it's quite safe? safe yes, okay, right. We'll take a break now. Do keep your calls coming in. We'll have a roundup of your views when we come back, but do keep mm. safe to eat. Ali, what's been the reaction so far from viewers? The majority of calls that I've taken from the viewers have said, yes, uh, the beef is safe to eat. That seems to be the, the feeling that we're getting through on the phones, although there are a lot of questions coming through this week. For instance, what about milk, cheese and butter? Can we get some answers on that, please? Are they safe to eat? People are concerned. And, and also, they're concerned about the loss of jobs, which is obvious in this area. Uh, Mr Fraser from Buchan said, do the public realise the ramifications of what is happening due to this media scare? He says, they, you know, that lorry drivers that will be out of work by this time next week, farmers may, farmers may get compensated if a beast is slaughtered, but uh, what about farm workers, etc.? They won't get compensated. OK, Ali, thank you. Well, a couple of those questions we can put in immediately. Does anybody have any uh, views on whether milk is safe? Yes, yes. You're saying it's perfectly safe. You're saying it's not known. Well, it has been tested. If it's and been no tested, and has been you see, the experiment is very difficult to keep an experiment going long enough to say it is okay, because the incubation period in experimental animals, even mice, for this extraordinary disease is, is in the order of a year or longer. So how many years are you going to wait before you say it's safe? Certainly, the milk of infected, scrapey infected ewes has been shown to be safe, and so we hope it's the same with beef. Okay. Milk has been fed to, to mice over a period of a year or more, and <coughs> also injected into them, and there's no indication that there's any infectivity in, 
in milk, so cheese is safe. But may I come back to the sensitivity of the mouse test, because I would like to, to challenge Dr. Dealer on this. The test, you can dilute material out to 10,000 or 100,000 times and still find infectivity in brain tissue and in the gut tissue. Now, the other tissues in BSE animals have been examined, a whole list of them, including peripheral nerve, and no sign of infectivity has been found in these BSE-affected animals. Right, very briefly, Dr. Dealer. It's very, very, si very simple to answer that. You can only inoculate a very small amount into a mouse. You can calculate what is called the sensitivity of the mouse inoculation test, and you can show that as humans eat a meal of approximately 100 grams of any particular tissue at any one go, all you can show from that test is that that particular tissue, if the mouse did not die of the test, you, all you can say is there was less than 300 million infective units in one meal. That's all you can say. Right. Okay. I want to ask you, I want to ask, first of all, just for people at home want to know this, is gelatin safe? Gelatin's in a lot of foods. Is that safe? Nobody knows. I think what we have to, why is it, that, that an obvious question, why is that independent scientific advice continually been challenged? It has been scrutinised by people with no axe to grind. Further than that, it has been scrutinised internationally. The, the statements made have the support of the World Health Organisation. We know tonight, uh, right now, that it has the support of the European Standing right, this Veterinary is, Committee. This is a point that this side should answer. It does committee, seem it's independent. But, this but is that scientific committee advice. has just this week said, whether we like it or not, that BSE probably transmits to man. It didn't say that. It did not. Can I ask you, though, can I ask you why you should know better than a, a committee, no, committee of, of eminent scientists? No, the committee said John it should Hansen probably, it probably, it there's a likely you, you are link challenging now. everything almost that they no, are saying, no, but I'm why sorry, do you know better? The committee better? this week <laughs> said, previously the government's stance was there was no likelihood of transmission. BSE could not transmit to, to but, man. But does that make the everything point, else that they're John saying John Patterson's wrong. committee has this week said there is now the likelihood Scientists that BSE likely. will transmit to man because of the 10 cases they have cited. And this week Donald has changed the debate. No, do you accept, do you accept this side, do you accept that there's now evidence that BSE can transmit to humans? No, despite no, all no, of no, said. Absolutely not. Patterson has yeah. said he doesn't know whether he's going to be one extra case or even no extra cases of CJD coming from the BSE. Do you accept the implication that it can transmit, despite all that was said before? The possibility, the possibility. If we, were, if we would have to say that because that's what the 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 uh, the, the I, I forgot the CAC the, the CAC committee have said that that there was a distinct possibility that it can and it has to be looked at carefully. Now, but 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 the point is that that doesn't change from where we were a week ago or a month ago in actual reality because what what the government has been doing all the all the pieces that have come together over the unfolding of a very complicated story has been all the actions been taken up to now is just in case this scenario came through all the pieces that were put in place of removing removing the feedstuffs first of all then the the carcasses and then the pieces of carcass etc all these pieces are put together just in case there was an infective a, a, a possibility so that these these uh, safety procedures were put in place with the best scientific knowledge and i do not believe there's anybody over there who is better informed than the than the Will very Patterson. very eminent scientists have been put to work okay. on this issue. Just say that, uh, the scientific uh, committee has got expert advice but it's only one source of expert advice and there are many other experts in this country who were warning about the dangers to public health long before the control measures were put in place. As early as yes, indeed they have. I would, early, like to, I, would like, I would like to go to Francis and Derek Hall at the back. You lost your son through CJD. Do you believe that that was because he ate infected beef or it's do you think it could have been something the, else? The government's told us. Are you sure? I mean, it, it could have been something else. It's just an implication. You're convinced? This is the experts that this man is talking about. He, he's told us that that, what, that is what caused our son's death. What were the, the symptoms? I mean, a lot of people at home don't really know what CJD is. What were the symptoms? that? Depression, to begin with. Uh, apathy. <sighs> Just lack of interest, and then uh, hallucinations, like, like you see the cows, the frightened look in his eye, uh, loss, of, loss of balance, 
his speech went. Loss of everything. Just, just everything was rubbed out from as if it was just being rubbed out. The way the way he developed, it was rubbed out. And what were you told at the time? Because obviously Nothing. at the time, they said they, they didn't totally recognise it. They hadn't seen it before. Never such, seen such a range of symptoms. Nobody anywhere recognised in the world. it. So and this is experts. What has this this week's announcement meant to you? You're now convinced Anger. you know what it was. It is, it's now been proved by post-mortem that it was CJD. Dr Will from Edinburgh, CJD, uh, surveillance, surveillance yeah. unit head, was on Channel 4 on Sunday, asked by a, a school kid of 12 year old, would he eat a beef burger? And he did. And that was Sunday. And, and this comes out on Wednesday. And everything, the so-called uh, Notice that we're warning about the, the possibility of, a, of a, 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 a you know transaction between the, the CJD and the BSE. I mean, ten years ago they were the head cases, but everything's been turned around now. You know, They've it, been it, proved right. The shoe's so on the other foot. But it's a fearsomely harrowing story that, and it affects it affects us all quite parties. honestly. And and that that the. It's difficult to return to the, the, the sort of objectivity of the debate, which is, is, beer, is, is meat well, safe Let me today, get this you straight. Know? Your, your argument is that this would no longer happen because of eating beef now. Be All these cases are because of beef that was eaten before the government acted. Is that what you're that saying? Is the yeah. clear, the, that is the clear logic that the scientific fraternity is putting forward. Okay. Cases, cases like this have been described in parts of the world where there is no BSC. And it is not possible to say by any criteria, any yeah. scientific, oh, any scientific, it, it is not possible to say, it is not possible, can I, can I finish please? It is not possible to say by any scientific criteria what the cause, of, what the origin of the organism that caused this case was. Okay, Helen, go. They have not taken all the measures that they should have taken to protect United Kingdom citizens from exposure to this bug because calves' brains still go into human foods although the Select Committee on BSE advised the Minivag and Fish that they should ban calves' brains as well. The excuse was there is no evidence that calves can catch BSE from their mothers. Well, there, there is evidence, but the public isn't told about it. There is vertical transmission in cattle, and therefore the brains of calves should be withheld from our food. So, so you, you are seeing this side. You are seeing that we are still eating, we're still yes, ingesting. Calves' brains go into things like meat pies, pâtés, stock cubes, and tinned items. Okay, the gentleman in the corner there. <coughs> then why is there not a problem in France? Uh, we, for, uh, France was the first country to b ban British beef uh, the year, and for the last 10 years they've been importing calves from uh, this country to rate and it's no handy. Because so if, if we've got a problem here, the they've got a problem there as well. The period of the disease in humans is in the order of 20 years. Therefore you can say with perfect truth, there is no evidence that BSE can infect humans yet. Come 2005 AD, the figures may be different. Well, what are you talking about in figures? You're talking about an epidemic. I'm, well, I don't think we're going to get an epidemic like Richard Lacey says. He's a bacteriologist who deals with typhoid. And to say that 500,000 people are going to go down with, with uh, CJD as a result of this seems to me extremely unlikely. Crotchfield Jacob disease, very distressing, totally untreatable, is genetically determined. You're not going to blossom out into that disease, however many bugs you swallow, if you're the wrong tissue type. I don't think anything like that number of people will go down with CJD mm -hmm. as a result of BSE, but I do believe it's likely that there will be an increase, perhaps by a factor of three or mm -hmm. ten, come 2005 AD. In that case, shouldn't we stop eating beef? No. no, 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 no. no. Gentlemen, there, you've been no, trying for a while. I'm sorry, I just want to give somebody else a go. It, it's Gentlemen all right. We've had a lot of scientific crosstalk this evening from both sides of the floor. There are a lot of laymen and laywomen in the, in the audience here tonight, and everybody at home are not scientists, and we are entitled to know what advice we can rely on. We can rely on the advice of the independent uh, scientists on SEAC. We can rely on the advice given by the chief medical officers in Scotland and England that beef is safe to eat. But, but haven't this side kind of been proved at least partly right no, by, by this no, mix no, the, argument, the argument with all due respect tonight, the, argu the argument with all due respect tonight is, is beef safe to eat? And the, the folks They're saying no. At, well, the folks sitting at home are entitled to rely on the independent advice that has been given to the government. And with all respect to the 
arguments we've heard from that side of the, of the floor this evening, those arguments have been put to the to SEAC, as I understand it, and have not been accepted. I'm <laughs> saying meat products are not safe to eat. I'm not saying me. I'm an independent person, retired many years. I don't personally... Hold on. Could you, could just I have done a great deal of work on scrapie and CJD in the course of my lifetime. And I personally... And, and I'm independent, and I personally believe that meat products, which I've defined a moment ago, still contain the, the agent, but the red meat is okay. Does everybody agree with that, that no, beef no. itself is safe to eat? You can't be certain for the simple reason that there are independent scientists, Wendy doesn't agree, that Helen Grant doesn't agree, but there may be small infectivity in muscle. So you're saying but, stop but eating also, But Bill also, Martin, if I may Bill please Martin. add, it is not just muscle. Government regulations allow meat to be defined far more than muscle. All kinds of bits of the animal go in which may be infected. Can I, right, Bill, Can I establish two facts? One is that brains and thymus in calves under six months are prohibited bovine offals. So I think Dr. Grant is wrong. The second thing is that while these agents, while these agents are extremely resistant to heat and, uh, and temperature and, and, and pressure, Everything. nevertheless, the, the, it is not an absolute thing. And you, you can reduce the infectivity of these agents by heat. And by cooking, surface contamination can be eliminated by proper cooking of meat. Oh. Surface uh, contamination. Uh, George Lyon, George Lyon. George Lyon. I mean, we really, I mean, as lay people here, as, as the jury and the audience are, we have got to come back to the, to the initial proposition that the independent scientists who have prescribed on British beef and say it's completely safe to eat with the precautions that are in place since 1989, what that side are saying, there is a gigantic conspiracy theory going on here. A conspiracy by these scientists, a conspiracy by the government, a conspiracy by the European Scientific Veterinary Committee and a conspiracy by the week. World Health Organization. How many different bodies in the world can you pull the eyes over? They're still can thinking about children this weekend. They haven't given their pronouncement about children, have they? Well, is as far as I'm aware, the pronouncement that was made, there is no age sensitivity isn't according this to this a point that most yeah. of the independent scientific advice is against you? Let me just no. give you one no. example, the first example no. of this administration not doing that which they should have done. In the first place, they shouldn't have removed the fat solvents, which, when present, kept the fatty brain and spinal cord out of the cattle feed, and the cattle but, never but got the feed. But no. no, we're, we're talking about now. We're talking about Number two, when they knew, when this administration knew at the end of 1986 what these six cows in the South had died of, namely infected by, with this organism by being fed dead sheep, what did they do about it? Did they kill off those few animals that had swallowed the infective feed and banned the feed in 1986? No. And they told the vets so, involved... So why is there a conspiracy? What's the point? Well, they, that is what they should have done. Why didn't they do it? Why didn't they do because it? Because they didn't want to upset the farmers, they didn't want to upset the food industry, and, the, and they didn't want... It has been quite obvious from the word go we, that can this can present administration okay, has put yeah, okay. farmers are the first victims, the meat industry oh. was the second, and the public in general will be the third victim because of their behaviour. Farmer. Yeah. Yes. Can I just go back to the jury and say, so on that, the side opposite us, has all their firepower has been concentrated on maybe. We have scientists saying to us, independent scientists whose reputations are at stake, they're not going to to try and pull the wool over our eyes, saying, and the medical officer of health in both Scotland and in the United Kingdom, saying beef but is safe to eat. I have to put this to you, John. I have to put this to you. They were also saying that there was absolutely no link between BSE and CJD, no, uh, weren't they? There was no way of showing it. Yeah, but they were saying without doubt that beef was safe to eat, and now people are and they're still no, saying, they're still saying the medical no, they're officer is... But they're not the saying it's safe for children yet, are they? I mean, there is no doubt, whereas before there was, they were telling us there was certainty. I think if you, look at, if you look at the CIAC report, it states quite clearly there is no age sensitivity 
to meet products. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Why are they meeting this weekend to discuss the reputation there. is at One stake? One problem here is that there's, uh, I mean, I speak as a scientist, but not working in this area. I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding about what scientists can produce. Everybody would like them to say, it's absolutely safe or it's absolutely dangerous, then we would know where we mm. are. I think the problem is that it's almost impossible to, to prove categorically that there is no well, link. Can, I think I, you can prove that there is a link. To this side, we're, we're coming to the end. Can I put this to this side? We are talking <coughs> half a million jobs here. Yes. And we're yes. talking uh, lifestyles, we're talking tragedy perhaps for a lot of people. And you're saying maybe. Of course. Of course. But the rest of the world is saying maybe and right. cutting but off the beef imports. That's doing the damage. The important, okay. point here, I'll I'll come to the important point here is not half a million jobs. The important point here is to have the facts correct and to have consumers with complete confidence. But there's no such thing, it seems to me, as facts. There is what's one scientific advice, there's another scientific advice. One point we're actually losing sight of is the fact that BSE is an animal health disease and the measures in place are leading to its eradication. The numbers of cases are diminishing weekly now. We are over the peak and we're looking at the eradication of this disease. We are Will Patterson, Will Patterson, Will Patterson, I'll come to you in a second. There's a huge number of infected but apparently normal animals that we cannot diagnose and we are eating their tissues. There's a growing body of evidence uh, indicating a link between BSE in cattle and disease in humans. Now, whenever the first cases of BSE were discovered, many thousands of cattle had already got the infection we could do nothing to prevent disease. A similar situation could be happening in humans. Are you We've saying stop eating that. beef? What I'm saying is that when we're talking about the health of the nation, even a very small risk can translate into many thousands of cases of disease. We must take no risk whatsoever until we're 100% sure. If that means stopping okay, eating beef, then it has to be. Okay, gentlemen, uh, very briefly. No one can tell you that beef is safe. Mm. Even the government has admitted that. And it's about time the farmers were honest with the public. They don't know whether it's safe either. It's up to the public can to I decide the, for themselves. Can I put that to you? The, the consequences unsafe. could be unimaginable if you're yeah. wrong. Isn't it better to be safe than sorry? That's what the SEAC is doing. They're, yeah. they're, they're interpreting the data and they're taking, they're taking absolutely no chances. And you look, yeah, at John Pattis, you look at John Pattison on the television. You, you can see he's going through a, a very, very difficult series of decisions. Yeah, and he is he is playing it ultra safe. But to and be that blunt, is isn't, isn't safe stopping eating beef? Yeah. Isn't that safe? Oh, well, if you want to be absolutely safe, isn't that what to do? Car, I find it incredible. I'm astonished and I find it incredible that the, the people on the other side are deeming the whole agricultural industry, including the meat wholesale and retail trade, to be guilty until no, proven no, innocent. They're not guilty, they're victims. They're victims. They're victims. They're victims. They're victims. They're victims. Find paperwork to sell cattle from BSE accredited herms is clean. That's happening in Scotland. There are court cases going through now. Why are farmers falsifying paperwork and selling cattle from BSE herms as clean cattle? We need to take the alarmist position all along the line, and that's what this other side of the debate is doing. Is but hasn't, the hasn't this damaged speech. farmers' image in the, in the public eye? Yes, absolutely. I'm sure of that too. Debates like <laughs> continual debate. It's like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gentlemen, and yeah. George, George, I've got to stop because you, you've got 45 Based, seconds uh, coming up. I'm a farmer and um, yes, the disease victims. just has not been eradicated because there have been 24,000 cows born since the ban on animal protein. Right, you said so very briefly. It must be yes. another cause. BSE was made notifiable 10 years ago. CJD has never been made notifiable. And so if we could get the CJD made notifiable, we would get the figures much better. It would be a, it. a great help to everybody. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry, but we are going to have to stop it there. Thank you very much indeed. You've listened to the arguments for and against from our speakers, our studio audience and our viewers and it is getting closer to decision time for the jury as they decide how to cast their votes. What will their verdict be? What indeed will yours be? Find out after the break. Infected with, infected with a similar kind of disease. It is quite impossible to tell you it is safe. It is such a dangerous disease, we should not take that risk. Dr. Dealer, thank you. Well, you've heard the summing up. Now's the time for our jury to cast their votes. But while they're doing that, let's meet some of them. Gentlemen back there, what did you make of it? The first point I would like to make is that the, I feel the government has been pushed into making public statements really before the information has been properly put to them, and perhaps because they're frightened of criticism. The other one was, it was someone on this side who said, there are 10 now, and in the year 2005 there might be three times or 10 times, and it is genetically determined, the risk is still less than winning the lottery last week. 
So I'm afraid I, I have to go with, I think it's still safe to You're eat. You're still a beefeater. Lady here. Well, obviously there's no conclusive evidence from either side, but I would say for the sake of my own children, I would have to say no in the meantime. No, it's not safe to eat. Right, OK. And Lady there. I'm still not convinced beef is safe to eat. I want to know what they're feeding the cattle on. And um, I just hope human greed is not the cause of all this. OK, well, thank you very much. Some indication there of the views of our jury, but now it's time to find out their verdict on whether or not beef is safe to eat. Foreman of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Anne. We, the jury, have voted tonight as follows. Is beef safe to eat? Yes, four votes, no, eight votes. Right, a vote against beef. <laughs> Ali, people at home, how have they voted? People at home have voted in their thousands tonight again, and we thank them very much indeed for doing that. They vote, is beef safe to eat? Yes, 81%, no, 19%. Right, absolutely opposite from the jury. What were the comments that uh, stood out for you? A couple of comments from me. Willie McLaren in Blackford says that it's going to do immense harm to the industry and people should really look at it as the risk from smoking is far greater. It's really a disease of dairy cattle, which is from a bit of the south of England. It is a very, very slight risk. OK, Paul? Causing more fear than, than the prospect of, of BSE in beef is the uncertainty over all this, Annie. I mean, it's, it's actually quite distressing. I've, I've talked to a woman who is at risk of developing Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease because of the treatment she had earlier in life. I've talked to farmers who've never even seen a BSE-infected cow and who are facing ruin because of, of what they see as hysteria. Ken in Aberdeen says, whatever happens now, the damage is done, even if every expert in the world now proclaims beef safe. The industry will never be the same again. People will never feel the same way about beef again. You're finding a lot of confusion. Oh, immense confusion. Everyone, it, be, be, there's just uncertainty nationally. Everyone is listening to the experts on talk shows. There, there was apparently on a national TV show this morning a scientist who said he developed a test, a urine test, which could detect BSC in cows. He said he'd been ignored by the government. Now, people want to know if that's true. It After is the two true, calls about yes. that. Titch. At a butcher on a local meat producer, he says he reckons he's going to be paid off next week and the factory closed down the week after. He says it's the media that are scaremongering the whole thing, he said. In fact, a few folks said that, and the, the WHO have said there's no problem, no evidence for a problem with the beef. OK, Titch, thank mm. you very much. Oh, hold on, I think we've got another half minute. <laughs> you Wait, can give I'm me sorry, some right. <laughs> Yeah, OK, then. Well, I've got uh, Colin from Dundee was on. He said everybody's overreacting. He's going to dump his car on the River Tay because there's more chance of having an accident in that than being killed through eating beef. <laughs> Does he, he said, promise? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, he said he's safer to stay inside. He could get knocked down by a cyclist if he walks out of the house, actually, he said as well, to be honest with you. And uh, one other quick one, if I can. Uh, someone said, what about pet food? Could it not be a case of that uh, people have pets and they lick their owner, goes into the cat, and that could be infecting folk? OK, right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. That is the way you voted at home tonight, but you have a chance to continue this discussion on your local radio station. On Saturday, Steve Allen will be waiting for your call on Steve Allen's After Midnight phone-in on Murray Firth Radio. On Sunday morning at 11 a.m. to noon, Radio Tay AM listeners can tune in to Tay Talkin with Ali Valley. Listeners to North Sun 2 can phone Paul Martin Davis, who's on air from 9 a.m. until noon on Monday. Thank you to all of you who've telephoned our vote line and called in on the hotline tonight. We've had tens of thousands of calls from viewers over the series and sadly this is the last programme in the current run of We the Jury. I hope you've enjoyed the debates. Good night. Thanks for watching.